We get different reaction when we get 100 on the exam and 89 on the other exam because our mood varies just like a weather we do not know what the weather will be like tomorrow because we are uncertain but the forecast tell us there is a 70 percent chances to rain tomorrow so we might bring an umbrella with us and that is the help of the statistics it helps us to quantify and interpret data towards decision making for today's video we are going to discuss statistics as applied in conducting a research or study. But first, let us define the word statistics. Statistics is the branch of science that studies and develops methods for gathering, analyzing, interpreting, and presenting empirical data. Statistics is a very interdisciplinary field and almost all science topics and research concerns in diverse scientific fields drive the development of new statistical methods and theories. The use of variety of mathematical and computational techniques to develop procedures and analyze the theory that underlies them. But why do we need statistics in conducting our research? Because it can turn the data into value. For example, YouTube generated the suggestion engine based on the consumer's behavior and buying patterns. Tinder dating app can predict the likelihood attraction of the users based on their profile. Scientists collecting data from COVID-19 patients to create an effective vaccine against the infectious disease. Statistics is amazingly helpful in wide variety of majors, whether you are studying tourism, hospitality, government and policy, criminology, marketing, medicine, healthcare, finance, geography, and many more. How can we apply statistics in conducting a research? There is such thing we call quantitative research. Like statistics, quantitative research is the process of collecting and interpreting numerical data. Numerical data is the value of data in the study that has a specific measure associated with it. For example, how many participants answered yes on the first number? How many participants agreed on this statement? This numerical data in quantitative research can be used to look for pattern and averages, make predictions, test causal relationships, and extend results to larger groups. Quantitative research is a statistical, which includes figures such as averages, percentages, and quota. For example, you might conduct a research and discover that 50% of a student does not agree with e-learning. Quantitative research is defined by the quantity. The goal of quantitative research is to collect and analyze data in order to understand phenomenon. A sample's data is used to make population-wide generalization or predictions. Just remember, if everything is certain, we would not need statistics. There are three main elements existing in quantitative method. First is research design. Research design are either descriptive or experimental. Descriptive designs are used to assess the relationship between two variables which are the independent and dependent variables. The sample sizes are usually quite large. For example, conduct a survey of thousands of local adolescents. In most cases, subjects are only measured once. Subject that are frequently measured before and after a treatment is an experimental design. Here, the causality is examined. Small sample sizes are frequent. You might be researching a treatment for a small group of COVID patients, for example. Second, choice of data collection instruments. Examples are surveys or questionnaires with close-ended questions, data from another source like government database, or an experiment with a control group and an experimental group are typical data collections. Last, choice of analysis tool. For example, you may use confidence intervals and test statistics from t-test or f-test with significance level and p-values to report your findings. A statistical treatment can either be descriptive, which describes the relationship between two variables of population, or inferential statistics which test a hypothesis by making inferences from the collected data. 
it involves the use of a statistical method such as mean, mode, median, regression, conditional probability, sampling, standard deviation, and distribution range. These statistical methods allow us to look into the statistical relationships between the data and spot any study flaws. If your readers might find your study a little bit harder to understand because of tons of numerical data, GRAB can help them to understand your study and result. But what exactly is the GRAB? A GRAB is a visual depiction or diagram that displays facts or values in an ordered manner. It is also a discrete or continuous set of points, such as those that make up a curve or a surface, each of which indicates a value of a specific function. In determining the type of data to visualize, here are some of the examples. Bar graph, it is a rectangle of equal width and are used to indicate the numerical values of variables in a diagram. Histogram, a diagram made up of rectangles with the same areas as the frequency of a variable in the same length as the class interval. Pi graph, a graph in which a circle is divided into sectors each of which represents a percentage of the total. A scatter plot, the pattern of the resulting points reveals any association present in a graph in which the values of two variables are shown along the two axes. One of the vital sections of your paper that is essentially functioning is identifying the required data gathering method. Data gathering method is the procedure of collecting measuring and evaluating correct insights for research using established approved procedures is referred to as data collection here are the top six data collecting methods interviews used to collect data from a small interviews can be structured or unstructured structured interviews are similar to questionnaires in that each participant is asked the same question in the same order with multiple choices answered Questionnaires and surveys. A questionnaire is a written series of questions, whereas a survey is a process of gathering, aggregating, and analyzing the replies to those questions. Observations. A qualitative research method that involves observing participants continuing behavior in a natural settings. The goal of this type of study is to obtain more dependable information. In other words, researchers can collect information on what participants actually do rather than what they claim to do. Documents and records. Existing data is used in document and records-based research. This form of research can include attendance data, meeting minutes, and financial information. Because you are mostly using research that has already been conducted, employing documents and records can be both efficient and cost-effective. Focus group discussion. The facilitator might utilize the focus group guide to ask questions and prompt participants. Typically, the facilitator will ask the group questions and give participants opportunity to respond to one another's view. Oral histories. Oral history is a way of conducting historical research that involves recorded conversations between a narrator with first-hand knowledge of historically significant event and a knowledgeable interviewer with the purpose of adding the historical record. Now, let's move on to sampling method. It is a method that allows researchers to infer information about a population based on the results from a subset of population without having to investigate every individual. A method that has to be balanced against having a large enough sample size with enough power to detect a true association. Probability sampling methods. Probability sampling is defined as sampling technique in which the researcher chooses samples from a larger population using a method based on the theory of probability. It uses a statistical theory to randomly select a small group of people from an existing large population and then predict that all their responses will match the overall population. And there are different methods using under this. First, we have simple random sampling. In this case, each individual is chosen entirely by chance, and each member of population has an equal chance or probability of being selected. For example, if you have a sampling frame of 1,000 individuals, 
label 0 to 999, use group of 3 digits from the random number table to pick your sample. So if the first 3 numbers from the random number table were 094, select the individual labeled 94, and so on. Next is the systematic sampling. Individuals are selected at regular intervals from the sampling frame. The intervals are chosen to ensure an adequate sample size. If you need a sample size n from a population of size x, you should select every x of n individual for the sample. For example, if you wanted a sample size of 100 from a population of 1000, select 1000 over 100 equals every 10th member of sampling frame. Third is the stratified sampling. Now, in this method, the population is divided into subgroups or strata, who all share a similar characteristics. It is used when we might reasonably expect the measurement of interest to vary between the different subgroups, and we want to ensure representation from all subgroups. Last one is the clustered sampling. In a clustered sample, subgroups of population are used as a sampling unit rather than individuals. The population is divided into subgroups, known as cluster, which are randomly selected to be included in the study. Clusters are usually already defined. For example, individual GP practices or towns could be identified as clusters. And the last topic I am going to share with everyone is the non-probability sampling method. But, before I go on, I hope you guys are still with us because by the end of this video, there will be a fun little easy quiz that I hope you guys will enjoy. So let's go back and finish the lesson, shall we? Non-probability sampling is defined as a sampling technique in which the researcher selects sample based on the subjective judgment of the researcher rather than random selection. Just like the probability sampling, it also has methods under these. First, the convenient sampling. It is perhaps the easiest method of sampling because participants are selected based on the availability and willingness to take part. Useful results can be obtained but the results are prone to significant bias because those who volunteer to take part may be different from those who choose not to. Next, we have the quota sampling. This method of sampling is often used by market researchers. Interviewers are given a quota of subjects of a specified type of attempt to recruit. Second to the last is the judgment or purposive sampling which is also known as selective or subjective sampling. This technique relies on the judgment of the researcher when choosing who to ask to participate. Researchers may implicitly thus choose a representative sample to suit their needs or specifically approach individuals with certain characteristics. This approach is often used by the media when canvassing the public for opinions and in qualitative research. And lastly, we have snowball sampling. And this method is commonly used in social sciences when investigating hard-to-reach groups. Existing subjects are asked to nominate further subjects known to them. So the sample increases in size like a rolling snowball. For example, when carrying out a survey of risk behaviors among intravenous drug users, participants may be asked to nominate other users to be interviewed. And there you have it! We are done with the discussion today, and I hope you learned something. So now, are you ready to take the quiz? Let's.